Hello and welcome to another update. In this one, I'll be covering the whole front line, giving you a situational update, and then we'll be going over the backward area and then a quick look over Saporizhia. So starting out in the south, the Russian forces continue their attacks by Uladar, where they are continuing their attempts at solidifying their positions and preventing any Ukrainian counterattacks, and at the same time, expanding the gray zone so that they are able to have some sort of buffer zone between their positions and the Ukrainian positions. Then we move on to the Novomikhailivka as well as Marinka areas, where in Novomikhailivka the Russian forces continue positional battles here to the east of the village. As for the Marinka, fighting continues by the center as well as to the north of the city as Russian forces attempt to expand their zone of control and they continue attacking in these directions. Then we move on to the Pervomaiska area, where here the Russian forces continue their attacks in the center, as well as to the north and in the direction of Levelska to the south, as they continue these positional battles and push through the Ukrainian defenders in this area. As for the Fdivka area, the Russian forces continue their attacks in the direction of Severne, as well as to the southwest of Fdivka from Lopitne, in the direction of the northeast of Fdivka from Kamyanka, and here to the east as they fight over control of the highway, and at the same time fighting continues to the west of Krasnovarivka in the direction of the railways, and to the northwest of Novosilivka Druha in the direction of Novokalinove, as the Russian forces have gained control over this part of the railways. As for the Kremlinna area, fighting continues on the whole front line from Ploshenka in the direction of Makiivka, from Pechernopopivka northwest in the direction of Nevsky and southwest in the direction of Terny, west of Kremlinna in the direction of Serishne and Torsky, and south of Dubrova as well as Kremlinna in the Serebriansky forest area as the Russian forces continue positional battles within the forest line attempting to expand the zone of control and gain control over important intersections which will allow them to cut off supply lines to the Ukrainian forces within the area. Fighting continues in the Siversk front in the direction of Bilorivka and Vechno Kamyanske as Russian forces here attempt to gain further control over these areas and gain a proper foothold in Belohorivka. And then finally there is some slight advancement by Ukrainian forces here by Sakoyevanseti, some trenches here to the west of the village. This area here was captured by the Ukrainian forces. As for the Bakhmut front, fighting continues south of Orihova Vasilivka, as well as to the south of Ivaniske, as the Russian forces here attempt to gain further control over the areas, which will allow them to attack the supply lines here to the west of Bakhmut. Fighting also continues by the 00506 road here to the northwest of Bakhmut, connecting with Jesevyar, as the Russian forces attempt to gain a proper foothold and cut off the road completely here to the northwest of Khomove. And then we see fighting on the whole front line from Khomove and all the way down to the southwestern intersection here by the MIG stadium, MIG statue here to the southwest of the city. Then we see fighting here by the Olympic school as well as to the southwest of the northwestern parts, trying to reach the intersection right here, which is the main supply route being used by the Ukrainian forces right now. Then we also see fighting on the whole citadel area from the north, northeast and east of it, as well as positional fighting to the south of the citadel area, which is this area right here, as the Russian forces attempt to cut off the roads here to the southwest. Then we also see fighting here in the gray zone to the south of the citadel area and attacks by the high rise areas here to the southwest by the intersection which will allow the Russian forces to completely cut off this road here to the south of the city. So there's heavy fighting within the city, and then there's been this whole ammunition saga where Prigozhin keeps complaining about a lack of ammunition, while the uh, Russian forces claim that they're receiving as much as they need to, and if there's any issues, then they're looking into it. Then we have the idea that Prigozhin wants to pull out Wagner forces by May 10th. Then we have seen reports that Kadyrov, which was the leader of the Chechen forces, uh, wants to uh, suggested that the, 
that the Chechen forces replaced the Wagner forces. And now we have seen a new idea that uh, Kadyrov will not exchange the Wagner forces, but instead work together with them. And then this report came from Remy. He says, got only this, as in a message he got from the, his friends on the front line. Reinforcements from Chechnya came. This indicates that the Wagner forces sees these as reinforcements, not as replacements, which strengthens the idea that the Wagner, the Chechen forces are not coming to replace the Wagner forces, but they are instead coming to support the Wagner forces in this final fights. And from a Ukrainian source, I have that a large number of Wagnerites were moved to the Siversk front. So according to a pro-Ukrainian force, a pro-Ukrainian source that Remy has, the Wagner forces are being relocated to the Belorivka, Svartnokamianska and Spirina area by the Siversk front. Or it could also be here by the Fedorivka, Rostolivka, Vesele area to prevent any Ukrainian counterattacks in this area as to hold the defensive line here. So essentially we are seeing a relocation of forces prior to the capture of Bakhmut. This is all to put some sort of slur so that no one sees what's actually happening. But there's, an, uh, there's a relocation of forces that enables the Russian forces to prevent any counterattacks and at the same time uh, relocate their troops without raising any suspicion. So there's no indication that the uh, claims of Prigozhin that there's a lack of ammunition is actually true. And there's most likely no conflict within the Russian forces. They are just complaining to put up this uh, misinformation campaign so that they're able to relocate their troops to where they need them to be prior to the capture of Bakhmut, which could start some sort of Ukrainian counterattack or something in relation to that. Now, if we check the weather by Bakhmut, we see here that there will be some sunlight today and then there will be none for the next couple of days. And then from Friday onwards, there's going to be sun and no rain. So in this period of time, we are going to see the weather improve. The Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday rain is going to be light rain. So there's not going to be any significant uh, changes to the geograph geography. However, it will delay the uh, solidifying of the ground, which would delay any form of offensive being conducted before, at the very least, May 15th. Then we see in the Saporizhia front, which is this one here in the south, that it is similar. However, already it will only be rain on Tuesday and Wednesday. And then from Thursday onwards, all the way to Wednesday 17th, there's going to be sunlight. This, of course, is going to may change as we can see the predictability is very low already 40 percent for tuesday so there may not even be rain on there so essentially we are seeing that the weather is changing in favor of the ground solidifying and they're becoming less rain and that would mean a better opportunity for a ukrainian offensive in these conditions compared to what we've seen since the start of april where there had been constant rain so that is the current weather situation, and we can expect from that that there will be no excuses in form of the weather for the next couple of weeks for there not being an offensive by the Ukrainian forces, which indicates that it is closing in. Anyways, that is going to be all for this update. Make sure to check out my Patreon if you want to support me. I've done some changes on there, so you should check it out at the very least. And make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.